obviously there have been talks about the behind closed door shows taking place in July. Is that something you're interested in? Do you think you'd, you'd be interested in seeing bo- boxers going behind closed doors without the fans and spectators? I don't know. No, obviously, I, I sat on the couch and watched the UFC and I enjoyed it. But obviously, being there might have been a bit different. And you heard the UFC commentators say they can hear us. You know, the fighters in the ring could hear the commentators. And I, I don't know how. I don't know. I'd have to be there. Uh, hopefully, restrictions keep getting, you know, took off, and maybe, maybe more and more people can attend things. Obviously, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's happening at the moment, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen with these behind closed door shows. I just can't see it running, running smoothly for a long periods of time. Might get away with one or two, but I don't think it'll, it'll carry on for the foreseeable. Obviously, uh, Liam, before I do let you go, I just want to get your thoughts on a few other things in the boxing world. Start off with your brother, Callum. How's Callum doing in lockdown? It's been a few weeks now since I spoke to him. Yeah, it's just to say, probably give it all the same answers I'll give you. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's, been in, he's been in the gym with me training. So, so me and him have been, just me and him in the gym, partnered up. So, um, you know, we, he's a bit, but probably say, say the same as I will. He's, he's not, not, not ready to fight now. He's, uh, you know, his fitness is not bad, but he, uh, he's not hundred percent in the gym and, and, and on it. You know what I mean? That's, some, you'll probably get some people telling you they are, but you know, I can't sit here and tell you lies. Uh, I'm, I'm not. We're, we're, we're ticking over. We're, we're trying to get back into it now. You know, slowly but surely. We're saying every day, it's probably just down to now. Do you decide to it? You know. To be 100 percent ready, you've got to train well, you've got to eat well, and you've got to live well. And um, you know, we're not really on a on a strict diet at the moment, and that's probably the only thing we need to change. Once once we start the diet, then we'll start getting back towards you know fight shape. And Callum's the same; he's probably he's sitting over and he's just waiting to hear a little bit more. I thought we might hear more now with the UFC happening the other day. You know, the, the, I thought we might hear more, but we haven't heard much. So again, we're just playing the waiting game and waiting to see what's happening. Obviously, Callum was one of the names being linked with and being spoken about for that Canelo fight. In the end, it seemed that Billy Joe Saunders had it all agreed, just ready to be announced. What was your take on that entire situation and how did you feel for Callum when you found out that it was in fact going to be Billy Joe who seemed to have that fight tied up? Well, when you say how did I feel for Callum, I didn't really feel any. I, I, you know, I've said, I've said what I thought. Uh, I think it's getting took the wrong way, what I mean. I don't mean, I don't think Callum's ever in the room. You know, people have, how can I put this? People have said to me, you know, I've got phone calls saying, Eddie Ains, the man, isn't he getting Rocky Field and Canelo Alvarez? And I was just like, look, you're fucking daft if you think Eddie had anything to do with it. And I don't mean this on Eddie's behalf. You know, Canelo's that big now in boxing and, Whoever Canelo and Eddie and also say they're fighting, they're fighting. Because nobody's going to say no really to a Canelo Alvarez fight. So whoever they pick and choose, they're going to fight. And I think it was Golden Boy who thought, you know, we'll make Smith an offer, a low ball offer, what they knew he'd reject. And then they slaughtered him. Well, they tried to slaughter him. You know, they tried to put statements out that Smith knocked the Canelo fight back for... You know, which again was a lie, which was three times more than he's ever earned. Again, that was a that was another lie they said. But um, you know, he knocked the first offer back. Billy Joe knocked the first offer back. Billy Joe got a second offer, knocked it back. Callum never ever got a second offer. You know, Billy Joe got a third offer, and then whatever they agreed on, with Billy Joe they agreed on. I don't know, but you know, they both got offered one offer. They both said no, but the interview and statement got put out that Callum Smith knocked the fight back. And um, I just thought it's hard to embarrass Callum and then for their own self esteem that well, we've offered Smith the fight, you know what I mean? And that's what I thought they'd they, they done. Whereas, but I thought that was down to Golden Boy, that was that little year. It was not Canelo, you know, Canelo weren't even in the gym when all these negotiations were going on. And then obviously, we heard he's got a meeting with Canelo and Renoso, and we spoke to Renoso when we were in was it Mexico or America. America. Was it Arizona? Yeah, it was it was uh, Arizona. Yeah, we spoke so we spoke to an also there. Joe had to sit down with him with Callum and then Joe 
he, he said he's meeting Canelo on the Tuesday. Um, they're going to decide. They said they haven't even decided. So whoever whoever Canelo says he's fighting, he's fighting. You know what I mean? And, and that's why I believe he had the fallout over the Kovalev situation because Canelo said he wants Kovalev and then Golden Boy trying to get Kovalev as cheap as they can. And then Kovalev chose to fight Yardy and that nearly lost Canelo, you know, a light heavyweight title because if, if Yardy beat Kovalev, would Canelo have went near Yardy with him being young, fresh, big? You know, he picked he picked Kovalev because he was on, on his way out and on the slides and he nearly lost that opportunity if Yardy would have beat Kovalev. You know what I mean? And I know I'm rambling on away from the subject here, but I just think as soon as, as, soon as Eddie Minogue, Sean Canelo said, right, we want Saunders, it's Saunders, and it was down to Golden Boy to go and go and make that. And that's how I know they, they, they come with more offers to Billy Joe, whereas they never ever come back with any other offer than the first offer for Callum. So that just made me think, you know, you were never, you were never in the room and they just wanted to cover themselves. How did Callum cope with it all mentally? I know that I've spoken to him about it and he's, you know, he said that he was fine. But well, he always kind of thought in the back of his mind he wasn't going to get the fight. But from, from yourself looking in, how do you feel Callum cope with it knowing that he might not get the fight but he's also got to prepare for it in case he does? Yeah, he, he coped with it very well and, and, I'm, and I'm happy how he set the stall out. You know, we knocked the first off a back, which rightly, rightly so. You know, we should have you've got to know your weight as a fighter, he's unbeaten super middleweight world champion, who holds the ring magazine title. The first offer, it makes me think now, you know, we would have accepted the first offer, what would have happened, because, you know, Canelo and Reynoso wanted Saunders, they, they, they picked Saunders, so, um, and, and again, how I know this, because the second offer, Billy Joe knocked back, Callum said, I'll take that, and he never, you know, so, did I rather pay Billy Joe more again than, Pay less for Callum. So that, that's what made finalise my opinion that Callum's never ever in the running. But uh, I thought Callum handled it very well and he still is handling it well. You know, he, he still wants big fights and I'm sure if he goes and beats Daniel Jacobs or we don't know what's going on now with Billy Joe and Canelo. Um, if, if that doesn't happen, I'm sure Callum's going to fight Billy Joe. So. Let's just obviously touch on that situation as well. Firstly, with Billy Joe, he seemed to have that fight. How do you think Billy Joe fares against Canelo? Uh, I think he does well early on. And then maybe Canelo just, just starts taking over as the fight goes on. And a lot will depend on Billy Joe's fitness. Uh, but I think Canelo's that much. He's, got, he's a patient fighter and I think he'll, he'll get his time. And I think he, he, he pulls away late in the fight. Billy Joe, obviously, you know, since he's had his license suspended, once again, he's kind of going to start throwing it out there and the rumours will build again that Callum might end up getting the chance to fight Canelo. Do you think that Callum's name's back in the mix again for when boxing returns to face Canelo? Or? No, I think Billy Joe gets the fight unless, Can you know, we're in rooms Canelo and Golovkin is done for September. That was always the rumour anyway. So it's just whether Canelo opts to fight Billy Joe and then, then Golovkin before, after it uh, or just waits and goes straight into a fight with Golovkin we don't know but no I, I think whatever happens with the, with the board and Billy Joe it'll just be another uh, Luxembourg thing you know what he done last time Billy Joe will apply for the licence somewhere else and he'll fight he'll fight he'll fight Canelo and obviously with your brother just to, just to finish on Callum there's been talk about that Danny Jacobs fight what are your thoughts on it if we was to see Callum versus Danny Jacobs? Very good fight, big name, um, established name, proven name for Canelo Golovkin. Being two time middleweight champion, I think. Uh, you know, a good statement if he be goes and beats him. And, you know, if he stops him, it's a massive statement. Canelo and Golovkin both couldn't stop him. So I think Danny Jacobs is the fight to make if he doesn't fight Billy Joe. How's Stephen as well? You know, Stephen, not somebody who. You know, many people have heard of re heard off recently. Rather, how's Stephen been doing during lockdown? Yeah, he's just been spending time with the family. And um, I think long, I, I probably think the lockdown has has killed him. You know, I think he, he's back in the gym and he, he was having one last crack at it. He had a two little comeback fights, two or three, and he was ready to just right, right throw him in the mix. Now his next the loss will be his last one, and then this has come. So it's like kicking the nuts. You know what I mean? And, 
Um, but we'll see how long this lasts. The longer it drags out, the probably, I might say, the less chance you've got of him probably coming back um, if this drags out even longer. But you know, if, 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 it, if it finishes sooner, we can get back in the gym and maybe start getting out on shows, then you'll see him back. And again, what I, what I touched on at the start of the interview, he's in a situation now he's going to, he can't have another comeback fight now. He's probably just going to have to get two straight, straight in and he'll take that. Uh, but the longer it drags out, the less chance you've got of probably getting him back. I think he might just throw his hands in. Just a couple of quick things I want you to touch on before I do leave you to enjoy the rest of your day, Liam. Um, a lot of old legends of the sport looking to come back who have like charity bouts and what have you. You know, Mod Tyson, one of those. What are your thoughts if you've seen some of the videos and that flying about? Yeah, I don't know. We've got mixed opinions. Tyson looked look boss on the pads, didn't he? You know what I mean? Um, I just think it looks it's boss to see him back in shape, looking after himself, doing what he probably loved. But I don't want to see them back, you know what I mean? But if they come back, the only exception I'll probably make, if they come back, fight each other, you know what I mean? I've seen a load like, lately. Tyson, Holyfield, Shannon Briggs, even Klitschko, yeah. David Hay, um, I've seen James Tony yeah. put up yesterday. So if they all make comebacks, you know, fight each other, like old legends, like just, uh, you know, it's not going to ruin the reputations because... You know, Tyson lost to Danny Williams. It hasn't ruined his reputation. We all know what a fighter Mike Tyson was. But I don't want I don't want to see them come back and try and try and prove prove a point or fight the heavyweights of now. You know, if they come back or fight each other, I wouldn't mind seeing Tyson Holyfield again, you know, Tyson Shannon Briggs, Klitschko David Day, you know, something like that. So I just think maybe like a World Series. You know what I mean? Just all the old ones, Holyfield, James Tony, Tyson, all that. Uh, I'd pay to see that. I'm sure many people would, Liam. Uh, my final thing that I just wanted to get your thoughts on as well, there's a lot of talk at the minute about a potential undisputed heavyweight title fight between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. If we was to see that whenever it may be, when boxing returns, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, unbelievable, you know, to, to, to two heavyweights like that, to... Uh, Rule every division is going to be is unbelievable. And I don't think there'll be a bigger fight made as in ticket wise, maybe even money revenue. You know, that is just going to blow the roof off anywhere. And um, not, nothing will touch that. But regarding the fight, you know, two very good fighters, two very likable fighters. I just think Fiori, Fiori knows his way around the ring, how to mess a fighter about if he has to. He's shown he can put it on people like he did with Wilder. Uh, so, obviously, I pick Fiori. But, you know, I, I like Joshua. He's a very good fighter. Technically good, but uh, I think Joshua just makes a couple a couple more mistakes than Fiori does. You know, the mistakes Fiori makes, he probably makes them. They, 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 they come with, you know, as Arsenal. The, the things he does wrong makes him effective Fiori, whereas where Joshua is technically upright and the mistakes he makes he gets punished for and that's what I, I think might be the difference. Before I do let you go then Liam, as I've asked everybody, what would you like to say to everyone who does tune in to watch our interview? Yeah, just obviously try and stay as positive as you can be, you know, and these this this will blow over soon and Tough times don't last, tough people do. So you just stick to what you're meant to be doing. Stick to what's doing you well and be positive and think so it'll, you know, it'll come out good in the end. Liam, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you. Obviously, that's brilliantly put there. I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your day, as I say. Best of luck with your little girl. Hope everything goes swimmingly. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you, as I say. Thank you for Boxing Social. Sorry, mate.